held on Good Friday to commemorate the crucifixion and death of Jesus. The service of darkness is not a funeral service for Jesus, but a time for adoration of the Lamb of God, in which we celebrate his sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. The darkness in the church symbolizes tenebrae, the darkness which surrounded the cross and darkened the earth from noon until three o'clock on the day Jesus, was, Jesus died. There are seven candles in the front of the church. Throughout the service, the candles will be extinguished and the lights dimmed to represent the extinguishing of the life of Jesus. You might also light seven candles in your home to practice this with us at this worship service this evening. The seventh candle is not extinguished, but is removed from the chancel. Just as Christ's body was hidden in the grave until the third day, so also is the seventh candle removed from sight for a short time. It is returned to a place at the end of the service, foreshadowing Christ's return from death to life. Silence in keeping with the solemnity of the day. We will have brief pauses following each reading from the Holy Scriptures. The service will end in silence. We invite you in your homes to remain for a while after for prayer and quiet reflection. The stillness and darkness of tonight are intended to contrast with the bright and glorious celebration of Easter morning. So thanks for joining us for worship this evening. It's a little bit different this year with Holy Week services as stay at home orders and the pandemic that we're living under. Some of you are joining us by watching the YouTube channel of the church or the posting we have on the church website or perhaps watching us live in real time, the actual time of the worship service. We are praying, of course, for the many that are suffering from the virus in our own faith community. So I'll simply mention these prayer concerns. The family of Lucille Pearson, she was a member here at one time, but a service was being held, was held today, Friday, for the burial at Spring Garden Church. Please continue to pray for Carol Evanruid, Beth Lacey, Melba Mundell, Eric Erkstrup, Richard and Janie Gerke, Lawrence Johnson, Connie Gasme, Ava Bergstrom, Sharon Doctor, Ion Tomasetti, Carol Cree, Annie Vesey, Andy Stein, Muriel Joinka, Andrea Deacon Jones, Beverly Johnson, Melvin Johnson, Bonnie Holt, Deb Pierce, and Deb Graber. So we're trying to offer many different venues for you to join us electronically um, with some of our latest technology tools. James providing a great uh, piece of music every day for us on our church Facebook page. Betsy is offering Wednesday night studies uh, during the week for our families. And then we have, of course, our worship services that we're putting out on the web. And then there is time to jump in. I haven't had many tune in yet, but on Tuesday evenings, opening up for everyone to come and just have a coffee conversation like we would on Sunday morning via Zoom. And that's 6.30 on Tuesday evenings, again, on Zoom. Thursday mornings, we offer a little family parenting devotional for parents and activities at home. And we're also sending resources out to our homes of our children. Now I'll roll the offering announcements as I walk you through those a little bit. So, stay at home, hands-on, Good Friday offering activity ideas. This might be a good day, good weekend to draw and paint or color crosses reminding us of Jesus' cross. So, you can take pictures of crosses at home, you can draw those crosses. Then we invite you to send them to a loved one. A young child, you can actually post the pictures you've made or pictures you've taken on an email, send them to us, or also on Facebook Messenger. If there's anything we can do to help you, we do invite you to give us a call. We'll be there to help you as a community of faith. We also invite you to consider our Easter offering envelope that was sent in our newsletter this month and praise for God's victories for us in times like this and winning even now and with our proclamation of the Easter message. We thank you for your continued financial support in this era of doing church ministry in a different way. And as a reminder, remember that you can give to the church online through the website. Many people have found it very easy to go to their bank and set up automatic giving to keep their commitments alive. You can also send your offerings in the mail. 
Finally, I want to just mention, you see the globe offering here. They're offering plates to remind us of that during the worship. But at least in the month of March, and we kind of fell short because the doors were closed, everybody was on that stay-at-home order. But the food shelf could really use our help here in Cannon Falls. So they're still taking donations. You can call ahead or simply bring it, and someone will meet you to come out to your car to help you with those uh, canned goods. Canned soup, canned fish, canned free fruit, canned meat, laundry detergent, peanut butter, spaghetti sauce, and pasta are the greatest needs right now. With those announcements then, let us prepare for worship, and we invite you to join in the invocation this evening. Please stand at your home if you're able. In the name of Jesus, who loves us and dies for us. Amen. We pray our responsive prayer. Come, let us worship the Lord. Who is obedient to death, even death on a cross. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We live by faith in the Son of God. Who loved us and gave himself for us. Christ loved us and gave himself up for us. As a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Let us pray. God most holy, look with mercy on this your holy family for whom our Lord Jesus was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of the wicked and to suffer death upon the cross. Keep us always faithful to him, our only Savior, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Seven words from the cross. The first word is from Luke 23, 26 through 34. As they led Jesus away, they see Simon from Cyrene, who was on his way in from the country, and put the cross on him made him carry it behind Jesus. A large number of people followed him, including women who mourned and wailed for him. Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me. Weep for yourselves and for your children. For the time will come when you will say, Blessed are the barren women, the wombs that never bore, the breasts that never nurse. And then they will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and the hills come, cover us. For if men do these things when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both criminals, were also let out with him to be executed. And when he came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thanks be to God.
38 to 43. There was a written notice about Jesus which read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence. We are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you. 
Why are you so far from saving me? I am a worm and not a man, scorned by men and despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He trusts in the Lord, let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. We sing together. They divide my garments among them and cast lots for my clothing. But you, O Lord, be not far off. O my strength, come quickly to help me. We say. Later, knowing that all was now completed and so the scriptures will be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vineyard was there, so they soaked the sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant, and lifted it up. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thanks be to God.
from John 19, verse 30. When Jesus had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thanks be to God. We sing together with sacred head now we do.
Hear the words of the prophet. See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted, just as there was many who were appalled at him. His appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form marred from human likeness, till he will sprinkle many nations. See means to fix one's eyes upon, or to observe with care, and that's what we do on Good Friday. Do you see him? John the Baptist said it this way, Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Tonight, I invite you to look at Jesus, to fix your eyes on him. Who has believed our message? To whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He was despised and rejected by him. A man of sorrow and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men would hide their faces, despised, we esteem him not. This is the ministry of Jesus. Do you see him? And yet religious leaders rejected him because he was not going to be their savior king and warrior king. Paul talked about this as the foolishness of the world being the wisdom and the strength of God. Surely his born or infirmities and caused all our sorrows, carried them, and yet we esteemed him stricken by God, smitten by God, and afflicted, pierced for our transgressions, crushed by our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace. It was upon him and by him we are healed. Do you see him? This is the heart and soul of why Jesus came. It was not his sin, but ours. Pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace, by his wounds we are healed. Paul said he became a sin who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He was oppressed and afflicted, and yet he died, not uttering a word from his mouth. He was like a lamb led to slaughter. The sheep before its shearers is silent. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. He was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of the people, he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in death though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Do you see him? This prophecy was so completely fulfilled in Jesus, his betrayal, his trial, illegally holding him at night. All of this was so oppressive to him. His assigned grave was to be with two thieves, remember, but a rich man petitioned the governor for the body to lay him in his own grave and tomb. John wrote, he is the atoning sacrifice for his sins, and not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him, to cause him to suffer, and therefore I will give him a portion of the grave, he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death that was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession with the transgressors. Here's the resurrection now. Jesus defeated the cross of death and the grave. After the suffering, the prophet says, he will see the light of life. He will prolong his days. Do you see him? In C.S. Lewis's writing, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, <clears throat> the evil witch demands the life of young Edmund, who was revealed to be a traitor in the storyline. The witch demands exact and merciless payment for what he had done wrong. What Edmund owes must be paid in full, and the witch will settle for no less than Edmund's life. 
But this is where Aslan steps forward, the great lion. Who is the Christ forward figure in the story? He steps up and steps in. Aslan comes forward to the witch and, and tells the witch that he is willing to suffer and die in the place of Edmund. The witch agrees, and then she kills Aslan, reveling in her victory over the great lion. However, and here's where the story really gets good, Aslan raises from death to life. Do you see him? Aslan goes on to explain that although the wicked witch knew his, this deep magic which demanded the death of one who was a traitor, her knowledge only goes back to the dawn of time. Aslan, however, knows the deeper magic from before the dawn of time. And that knowledge was, if one is willing to become a victim for one who had been committed of treasury and offered up his life for the traitor, then death itself would be overcome. This is what God has done in the suffering servant Jesus. In the gift of the servant, we come to know the full depth of God's love. The prophets, as we heard, told of one who would bear the transgressions of all, the one who would also end through love all pain for us. And Jesus was that perfect suffering servant. You see him? In November of 2008, in Mumbai, the largest city of India, it became the target of a series of terrorist attacks that killed some 173 people. Two victims of that terrorist attack were from New York. <clears throat> a young Jewish rabbi and his young wife, both in their 20s. Terrorists had entered the rabbi's home and killed the rabbi and his wife. The couple's nanny found a two-year-old son Mashi, sitting in the pool of his parents' blood. When memorial services took place in Brooklyn, New York, the two-year-old cried out for his parents. Imai! Abba! Meaning the words in Hebrew for mother and father. Imai! Abba! He cried. Little Moshi's cry echoed through the synagogue, drowning out the voices of hundreds of people who grieved the passing of his parents and death. Why? Why? Why all this suffering and pain and death? Jesus cried out from the cross, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And this, these words of the suffering servant himself, Father, Abba, am I, Abba, in your hand I commit my spirit. While you and I may not understand all the depths of what that human question is, why? Why suffering? Why pain? Why death? Why this servant? Why these senseless, terroristic deaths? Why sorrow? God gives us the resolution. God gives us Jesus the Christ. The suffering servant Jesus who went to the cross for our sake. Paul's words in Romans say it this way, while we were still helpless, while we were still weak, Christ died for the ungodly. While we were still sinners, Christ died for the likes of us. And God did this because God loves us. Do you see? Jesus, the suffering servant, stretched out his hands and he died. He died because God loves us, because Jesus loves us. And this is the message of Good Friday. Amen. We sing together the song, There is a Redeemer.
seventh word, Luke 23, 44 to 56. It was now about the sixth hour. Darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour, for the sun stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Now the centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. And when all the people who had gathered to witness this sight saw what had taken place, they beat their breasts and went away. But all those who knew him, including the women who followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God. And going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth, and placed it in a tomb, cut into the rock, one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day. The Sabbath was about to begin. The woman who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. And then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes. But they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thanks be to God. Why you? 